Hello everyone. So welcome in the new video. So today we will start our hardware interface. So for that we will use STM32 F7670Zi part number and for that we will use Nucleo 144 board. So this is the Nucleo 144 board. So here in the image you can see we will use this board for our hardware interface related experiments so in this board some user leds are there so initially we will start with those leds so here in this user manual you can see multiple things are there so we will start with the leds so here in this you can see different leds are there on board ld1 ld2 ld3 so initially we will use these two led ld2 and ld3 and we will use apis for the gpio and we will write high and low values on these two pins and we will observe the output on our nucleo 144 port so for that i am using stm32 cube mx software so First, you have to create a new project. So, steps will be same, but this time we will do the programming for the hardware. Now, next, you have to select board. In type, you can see Nucleo 144 is there, and in this Nucleo 144, we have this part number 7Z. 767ZI. So you have to select this and click on start project. So it will open that pinout diagram, and in that pinout diagram, we will follow the same steps. We will provide the crystal, we will select GPIOs. So here you can see for this Nucleo 144 board, some default pins are already defined. So we will clear them using this function pinout and I will use this clear pinout so it will clear all the G, all the pins configuration and now we can configure as per our requirement so first thing is you have to provide the clock so here you can see I'm selecting crystal ceramic and now as I told you earlier we have two LEDs one with PB7 and one with PB14 so we will simply select this PB7 GPIO output because LED is there. So we will write high and low signal and same way on PB14. Again, we have to configure this as GPIO output. And after configuration, you can see we have a crystal and two pins as a output. And now simply you have to generate the code. So here you have to click on this and now you have to give project name project location code generator in code generator you can see we have a tool chain option so now for hardware i will use kaili okay to write the code to generate the x file to load the program and that's why in tool chain you have to select this mdk arm version 5 K version 5 is already installed in this PC. So I'm selecting that tool chain. So for programming purpose, you have to install two software. One is STM32 Cube MX, which you can download from the STM site, and one is KL5. However, you can do the same thing with STM32 Cube IDE also. So it is up to you. And now after doing this. You have to generate the code so it will take some time and your code will be open in kill software so here you can see it is now generating the code and now code is successfully generated now you have to open the project so your project will be open in scale microvision 5 so this is the project. So 
so all the files are same as we have discussed in my previous videos so you have to change in this main.c so here you can see gpio initialization part is already done configuration part and in while one we have to write a logic so now i will simply copy this write pin apis using this we can write high or low on specific pins so now you can see in while one i am simply writing high set gpio set means writing high on both pin then i will generate some delay using hl delay then again i will write low and again i will generate delay So this is how you can blink both the pins simultaneously using this write pin function right so set reset both 7 and 14 this is logical oring so it will set both the pin then it will reset both the pin after that much delay and again after that much delay again it will set the pin so now you have to generate the file you have to compile the code meanwhile in video you can see this is the board and this is nucleo 144 board here you can see the part number right and here two leds are there okay so if you will closely observe this then this is ld2 and this is ld3 okay so these three leds are there on board leds are there and currently we are writing code for this ld2 and ld3 okay So this is the hardware you can see and since all different apis or the different drivers are there for this timer and other, so that's why it is taking that much time for compiling the code you can see code is creating hex file successfully with zero error zero warning so now we have to load the code so for that you can see we have this option configure flash, flash tool so in flash tool here you can see we have this ht-link debugger so our board is connected to this debugger this is the mcu and now in setting you can see some options are there this is the version this is the serial number or kits serial number which is connected with the pc right and in flash download you can see you can select this option reset and run just click on ok ok and now using this i can load the program so closely observe the board when i will click over here you just observe this led it will indicate the program is loading so now for this option i am selecting no and now you can see our code is running on the board Sometimes you have to press the, press the reset, but as the as I have selected this option reset and run, so it is automatically running, and you can see both the LEDs are blinking simultaneously. Now let me change the code. So instead of simultaneously both LED, now I will turn on and turn off them in a sequence. So 14 set, 7 reset, then 14 reset and save and set okay so now instead of simultaneously now they will turn on and turn off sequentially so again we have to compile the code definitely it will take some time here you can see both the leds are blinking simultaneously and now our code is compiled successfully and hex file is generated and now i will load this code simply and just observe on the heat on the hardware and now you can see as per the code both the leds are turning on and turning off in a sequence so 
they stood up simultaneously you can see they are linking one by one so this is how you can write the code and you can load the code on actual hardware so this is for today's video so meanwhile in future's video i will explore this hardware and write the code as much as possible so thank you for watching my video if you like my work then please like my youtube videos and please subscribe my youtube channel thank you